What is going on, everybody? My name is Zella Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. I just finished reacting to the last episode. You guys have seen the Hell of a Boss episode. It was a lot deeper than I thought it was, but we're not here to talk about that episode. We're here to talk about today's video. We are doing another SCP video. We're trying to get back into the swing of reacting to SCP videos. We are going to be back to SCP-1499, The Gas Mask. Now, this is one I've heard of, and I've seen Markiplier use during... Is SCP uh, Let's Plays, but I don't know what the mask really does. I've only seen it in action. I think it obscures your vision to another reality, but I have no idea. So we're going to go ahead and react to this and find out what the gas mask really is in three, two, one. There is something inherently unnerving about the sight of someone wearing a gas mask. Maybe it's the wide, soulless portholes where a person's eyes should be, or the huge round filter extruding from their f You know, it's actually interesting because I was just watching, uh, the other day, I was just watching everything about the Chernobyl disaster. I guess that's another reason why I want to react to this video because I was looking into that. It's actually a disaster video that I w want to react to. I just got to look up the name of it again. I'll possibly record that today face that makes them look like something inhuman. It could also be the fact that if ever you see someone wearing a gas mask, you may be surrounded by poisonous gas. And if you're not wearing one yourself, someone else's gas mask may be the last thing you ever see. Whatever the reason, you might be wondering why we're talking so much about gas masks. Well, that's because you're about to meet SCP-1499, which is, as you might have already guessed, an anomalous gas mask. How For all you, you work, military Mr. history buffs out there, SCP-1499 is specifically a Soviet GP-5 gas mask. These were produced between 1962 and 1990 as a way to protect the wearer from the fallout of a nuclear blast. Back then, during the Cold War, an atomic conflict between the United States and the USSR, that's Russia, was a constant threat. And so these masks were sent to most of the fallout shelters in the Soviet Union. While the GP-5 masks could survive in all weather and protect against radioactive substances for a time, some of their filters contained a number of harmful chemicals like lead and asbestos. The Wait, fact really? that these gas masks were airtight would mean that somebody could end up inhaling these toxic chemicals while trying to protect themselves from nuclear fallout. If you look up the definition of irony in the de I did not know that. About the gas mask. I did not know they carried that. Dictionary. You may see a picture of one of these gas masks sitting right next to it. And if you think that sounds bad, just wait until you hear what sets SCP-1499 apart from the rest. Upon first inspection, the mask still seems to perform its original function. The filter works properly, and the airtight seal is still formed when placed upon somebody's head. However, when worn by someone, the anomalous effects of SCP-1499 will also activate. While it doesn't fuse to the wearer's face and turns them into a hysterical zombie chillingly asking for their mommy, the gas mask does cause anyone who puts it on to completely disappear from view. Now it's worth noting that really? this isn't a gas mask that grants its user the power <laughs> Harry of Harry Potter. <laughs> if that was the case, this anomalous item may actually be desirable. SCP-1499 instead causes a person to physically vanish as in they are no longer detectable at all. Subjects that have worn SCP-1499 report that they don't feel any sensation of moving. They simply put the mask on and end up, well, we'll get to where it is they go. You see, through testing, the SCP Foundation's researchers were able to determine that giving someone a two-way radio before they put SCP-1499 on means that they can still be contacted after they vanish. And it's through these radios that the Foundation discovered where the mask wearers go. During testing, subjects have reportedly found themselves in a strange alternate dimension after putting on SCP-1499. It has been described as a dark environment, inhospitable, barren, and filled with tall, black tower-like structures. Okay, I'm gonna give you my theory as to what the place is supposed to be. I'm thinking it's supposed to be a alternate reality where the nuclear fallout happened and he's walking around the wasteland in the after effect that's my theory you would think being unceremoniously transported to another dimension by a gas mask <laughs> would i should be get bad. i should get some scp arch i really should enough just wait until you meet the locals 
According to a number of test subjects, a group of humanoid entities inhabit this dimension, designated as SCP-1499-1. These creatures are taller than the average person, completely nude and covered from head to toe in a coat of a dark, viscous substance unlike anything found in our dimension. These SCP-1499-1 entities also have been described as having too many mouths and a large number of eyes covering their bodies. From the sound of it, the whole place makes the upside down from Stranger Things sound like a pleasant destination for a family vacation. <laughs> for the record, especially since season four is about to start up soon. Definitely gonna watch. I don't know if I'll react to it. We'll see. And that's something, something I want ask you guys should i start reacting to tv shows on this channel let me know in the comment section the reason we say according to a number of test subjects is that there has never been any photographic or video evidence of this place and the creatures that inhabit it all that we have gathered to date has come strictly from first-hand descriptions of those experiencing the anomalous effects of scp-1499 Luckily, anyone that puts on SCP-1499 and finds themselves in this place has a very quick and easy escape round. Should a subject encounter any danger in this dark, inhospitable dimension, then taking the gas mask off will drop them right back into our own plane of existence. Upon arriving back, they will not have moved from the spot they were standing in when they first disappeared, but it is unknown exactly how the gas mask is able to return them or indeed how it can send someone to an entirely different dimension at all. So, a gateway to another dimension. That's what the mask is. The Foundation has been running tests on SCP-1499 since they first acquired it, at first using D-Class personnel. The first test involving SCP-1499 saw a D-Class, D-67393, told to put on the mask. When she did, she found herself transported inside a building that was constructed from an unknown black substance. D-67393 surveyed the room she was in for a few seconds, only to hear something moving close by. The sound caused her to panic, and she retched the gas mask off her face, returning to the test chamber. Given that there was now a risk of losing SCP-1499, the Foundation moved forward with tests involving trained agents instead of D- Wait, as in the risk of- Possibly dropping it in the dimension, or risk of getting the mask getting destroyed before the user has a chance to get back. Because can the mask be the class personnel? Following this, the next test involved an Agent C putting on the mask, and like <clears throat> the D class before him, he found himself in the same dark room. But instead of taking off SCP-1499 at the first sign of trouble, this agent explored his surroundings. Agent C was able oh. to descend the building to a reasonable degree until he heard sounds coming from the floor below. After hiding himself, Agent C witnessed the very first sighting of the SCP-1499-1 creatures, remaining undetected and then safely removing the mask when the creatures had passed. Another agent, known as Agent Yu, was selected for an SCP-1499 test, chosen especially for her extensive training in stealth. Like those before her, she put on the gas mask. Stealth agent. Instantly, she found herself in the place- Are stealth agents also class Cs? I haven't watched anything from the SCP on this channel in quite a while, so I don't exactly remember um, the roles of every single class. And class A, B, C, E. I forgot what E is where her predecessor had left off and continued the exploration of the building. Detecting movement from the floors above, Agent Yu exited the building and spotted a number of SCP-1499-1 instances. The creatures were mulling aimlessly around, each sporting their own unique mutations, occasionally uttering low, grating noises. By now, if they were still using D-classes, they probably would have lost the mask and the people wearing it a hundred times over. Never get a D-class to do a field agent's job. Making her way past more of the tall, dark structures, the agent followed and observed a group of four creatures. A fifth approached them, prompting one from the group to step forward. As Agent Yu watched, these SCP-1499-1 creatures began violently assaulting each other, until she too pulled the gas mask off and returned to the Foundation. Oh. Shortly afterward, one final what? agent- This guy is- agent Look how buff that guy is. 
He's the kind of guy you don't want to invite to a bar fight. K was sent into this alternate dimension. What was his this name? This final agent, Agent K, agent was sent K. into this alternate dimension. And in black. black. This was less of a test, more a mission with the purposes of reconnaissance to give the Foundation a better, clearer idea of what the environment was like and to possibly even make contact with the SCP-1499-1s and understand them better. However, the outcome that followed could not have been worse. Agent K appeared in the other dimension between two of the black structures. The lighting made it difficult to see much of the environment around him, but he remarked that the buildings resembled tall spires constructed out of hard rock, as was the ground beneath him. After a few short minutes, he soon spotted a group of SCP-1499-1s entering a larger structure, an elaborate building with a Looks number like a of church. towers and spikes on it, as well as what appeared to be blood. Approaching the building with caution, Agent K located a small secluded side entrance, away from the larger front door. As quietly as he could, he made his way inside. The sounds of grinding filled the air from all around him as Agent K saw a huge group of the mutated humanoid creatures. Each one had their mouth wide open, all of their mouths wide open, making a chorus of grating sounds. The entities were, according to K's description, all facing towards one of the SCP-1499-1s that was standing on a platform in front of them, with a number of bodies around it. This creature seemed to be leading an odd ritual and began to cut open its own torso. Worm-like creatures spilled out of the open womb and a beam of light followed, projecting out of the entity's Whoa. chest. Agent K realized that this light was some form of portal. Another worm, like the kind that had come out of the ritual leader's chest, began to appear in the portal. Deciding to act, Agent K dashed out from his hiding place, opening fire at the creatures all around him. He reached for something glowing in the lead entity's chest, which he thought was bringing the worm creature through the portal. Grabbing it, Agent K pulled off the gas mask and found himself back at the Foundation, holding a human heart. But it doesn't oh. end there. At the exact same time, on the exact same date, a man attacked the Cathedral of Christ the Savior in Moscow, Russia. During the church's morning services, the gunman entered dressed in a suit with a gas mask over his face and proceeded to shoot ten civilians. Six were killed, three left in critical condition including the church's chanter. However, the worst occurred oh. to the priest performing the service. The attacker ran to the front of the cathedral, producing a knife which he used to cut open the priest's chest and remove his heart. Then, just as quickly as he had appeared, the assailant vanished before the eyes of multiple witnesses, and Moscow police were unable to find any trace of the man. Officially, the cathedral was attacked by Nikolai Orlov. Undercover Foundation operatives inside Russia's media and military have spread this cover story of a violent man who acted alone in his attack on the church. Meanwhile, the SCP Foundation is keeping Agent K detained, questioning him about his involvement in the incident. According to him, everything happened exactly as he described it. No church, no priest, just him wearing SCP-1499 and sur- Oh, so wait, I it teleports him to another teleports you to another part of the planet. Planet in this case Russia, but the view of the mask changes the entire surround surrounding environment. Along with the person the person who shows up. Surrounded that's, by yeah, the that's... creatures. The audio recordings taken from his exploration mission also seem to align with this story, but that still doesn't explain how another figure in a gas mask appeared in Moscow and claimed the lives of multiple churchgoers. Not only that, but dispatching them in the exact same way Agent K dealt with the SCP-1499-1 creatures. The only possible explanation was that Agent K was the perpetrator, even if, in his mind, he was still telling the truth. Hoping to avoid another incident, the O5 Council has suspended all further testing with SCP-1499. Oh. Agent K has been scheduled to undergo a psychological evaluation, believing the creature he saw being summoned had to be stopped at all costs. The other agents and the D-Class involved in earlier testing are all being brought in for questioning as well. It is still unknown what the anomalous effect of SCP-1499 truly is. Is it actually capable of transporting someone to another dimension? Or does it give a person hallucinations that make them think they're gallivanting off in Dimension X, while they're actually walking up to a church about to do something unthinkable? 
With testing suspended, we may never know, but it leaves us with an important message. Think carefully about everything you do, because what you think you can see doesn't always reflect what's really there. Now go check out Robot Battle Royale SCP-1370 Pesterbot and SCP-261 Pan-Dimensional Vending Machine for more fascinating anomalous objects from the SCP Foundation. Huh. Okay. Wait, what's that? Black Moon? Okay, that's one I gotta watch. Um, alright, so that kind of ending, that kind of summed my theory that I gave at the end, saying that the mask just goes to pe people who wear a different reality, but in tr truth, they're actually in the same reality, but their identity has changed. Process. I see Dr. Dr. Detective Void made a video on it, too. Uh, <laughs> but hopefully you guys enjoyed this SCP reaction video. Like and subscribe with also guys. The video will be in the link below, and I'll talk to you all to the next one. Bye!